So with great apologies on the uh, delay, the meeting of the Deerfield Planning Board today on July 12th, 2021 at 7.35 is called to order. And uh, I will read the whole new uh, executive order because in fact it is a little different and um, repetition is always a good way to remember things. This meeting is held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with Governor Baker's June 16, 2021 oh. Act, extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of the remote participation provisions of his March 20th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 20. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual disc broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should have made plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield hosts the meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participation details noted on our website. So we are called to order. Um, one of the things that we've done somewhat informally at our other meetings, well, maybe at first I'll identify the board members in attendance. Ann Mary? Ann Mary Cloutier, present. Denise Mason? Denise Mason, present. Rachel Blaine? Rachel Blaine, present. Kathy Wittroba? Kathy Wittroba, present. Kathy Sylvester? Kathy Sylvester, present. Andrea Liebson. Andrea Liebson present. And Annalie Wolfkopf present. So we have a full planning board and a quorum. Hi, Annalie. Uh, yep. We need to, I'm sorry, I should have done this. We need to identify uh, members who are uh, virtual. All right. So the virtual ones are Annalie. Yes. Yep. And Kathy Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Good. No, keep us on our toes here, Anne Mary. Thank you. Um, at a couple of our previous meetings, we sort of informally have begun each meeting talking a bit about our meeting norms. And I think it's um, a good practice for us to be reminded at the beginning of our meeting, um, sort of our rules of the road, which we've talked about with um, one person speaking at a time. Uh, to speak, we would raise our hands, or hands would be raised, and the chair would acknowledge the cue. Um, and also there is a, the Deerfield Code of Conduct from June 2020 that we want to observe the professionalism, consideration, no intimidation, we are respectful, common courtesy to all, refraining from using a raised voice, and a reminder to all of us that we are in fact setting an example for others who will be appearing before our board. Are there other... Um, mm, principles that people would like, members would like to um, volunteer or think about for our next meeting, if you would like. That sounds good. I don't know if it's a principle, but we just need to know if you're not going to be so that we always know ahead of time if we have a phone. Thank you. That's good. I think also um, we often mention that um, information that's repeated is uh, complicated in a long meeting. I think that is always a bad seat because one person may not feel that they're repeating information as much as presenting their point of view. So I think it's been always mentioned that we'd like not to hear the same point made over and over again. Um, but that we also balance that with a certain understanding that people want to be heard. Mm -hmm. that, that's, those are in dynamic with opposition. So it's complicated. We have lots of tensions. <laughs> 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 All right, thank you. Oh, those are good. Those are good additions. Thank you very much. 
um, reading minutes of our June 7th meeting. And Mary? Um, before we do that, I'm sorry, I, I had my hand up, but I don't think you noticed. Um, I couldn't really hear uh, all that Rachel said. And although I caught the gist of what she said, and I agree with what she's saying, I'm a little concerned about my, take, my ability to take notes ongoing um, without being able to hear everybody. How about if we oh, all sorry. hear, do a little testing, one, two, three, and you can let yes, us. Um, is that better in there? No. Not that so was better. A little better, sorry. And all I was saying was it's just complicated. Right, no, I get it. Yeah, I just wanna make sure. Kathy? No, I, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. And you can hear me. Logging on here, this might help. And this is Andrea. Can you hear me? Uh, not great. You can download it in two seconds. Share. A lot of feedback. Oh boy. Okay. Is that in? Oh God, no. <laughs> I will pass my It's hard. It's a horrible echo. Yeah, we can Hey, Annalie, this is Denise. Can you hear me? Annalie. Okay, considering we're having so many issues, I know what you've read from the governor, but I would suggest that we continue this meeting to another night until we can figure things out because this is really difficult on so many different levels. You're muted, Annalie. We're going to go through old business, and if that is not a reasonable way to have the meeting, then we can reschedule. Okay. Oh, except no. Uh, and Mary, you're doing the minutes. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess ostensibly I could do minutes from a recording tomorrow, but... Um, I can't really hear what's going on. Just a moment, please. We might have a suggestion here from our technicians. Denise, can you hear us? I can. And Mary, is there anything you can fiddle around with on your computer? It, I, I can hear you clearly. I could not hear Kathy Sylvester when she spoke, and yeah. Rachel, it was difficult hearing her as well. That's the issue. We can hear you, Annalie, but we can't hear anybody from the other mics. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and you can hear me now, too, because I'm on Zoom now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is hybrid. This is the whole issue of hybrid is right. that you can't make all gods happy at the same time. So, and... I'm getting in my car. So, Emily. <laughs> and Mary. Oh, and Mary. Thank you. The 
Let's do a test of everyone again. Rachel? Can you hear me now? Can you I hear me? No. You can because you're on the PA. Denise, can you hear me? I, yeah, I could hear that. And this is Andrea. Can you hear me? What? Yes. The answer is no. Okay. Annalie. But I can hear Andrea. I could hear Andrea. And I could hear Rachel. I can hear you. And I we can hear Annalie straight through the microphone. Um, but some of you, it sounds like Annalise microphones picking up your voice so that's how we hear you. And Annalie I have to say there's a very strange um, phrase that is on my screen right now. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That should not be there. Maybe. No. That's better. Mm -hmm. Rachel? Oh, I'm to stand. <laughs> oh boy. Hey, Annalie, another question. Is there anybody in the audience there physically? Yes. Mr. Upton's here. We have one public mm -hmm. guest and uh, in the audience and then a number on Zoom. Okay. Yeah. Oof. Well, um, we can't have a meeting if people can't be heard. And it, we've been spending 45 minutes trying to do this. Could we yeah. make minutes of last for the last meeting and get those out of the way? Because that's just- She's on her way here. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Um, so I'm- inclined to feel that we need to reschedule the meeting for a time when uh, the town can inform us that it appears that everything is Annalise, working well. Yes. Just, just to be clear as far as the procedure, that first paragraph, when you read that, it says that there's technical difficulties and so on and so forth. They'll continue as in person. It doesn't matter to me one way or other. I understand what you're saying as far as postponing and, and rescheduling, but I just don't want you to get in trouble here with what's. Thank you. What's the meeting there. will not be suspended. <laughs> Technological sure. problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. So we can't. Unfortunately, right, two of our. I mean, we do have a quorum, but two of our members, three, three of them. Well, it's one and a half. And Mary's on her way. <laughs> It'll take me 15 minutes to get there. Do you want me to come down? I can come down. Yes. Okay. If you're going to continue the meeting, I'll come down there, but I can't do this. Let's, if, if we. Uh, and who, and who's, and who's going to get us in trouble? Is someone going to report us to the police <laughs> i mean i can hear you you denise you can still hear us you can yeah. hear me because i'm the main i can hear you so i could actually even just move the the microphone tim you your hand is up yeah i just wanted to say that <clears throat> i believe the law um that was amended by the governor allows for full remote until April 2022. And this hybrid thing is an option. So you as a board can decide that the technology of Zoom works, but the technology of the hybrid system doesn't work. So perhaps your next meeting, you might wanna seriously think about the difficulties of this hybrid versus you know, either all in person or all Zoom. Right. Uh, because I think it does, it does, uh, allow for you to just be remote. Thank you, Tim and Beth. In fact, that is on our agenda and Anne-Mary just showed up. Um, 
Hey, Kathy and Denise, if you can come, that would be great. And in the meantime, we'll just move forward. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, see you. So, uh, and Mary, we might shuffle the agenda a bit here and Mary's pulling up her computer and she can let us know when she's ready to talk. I mean, we're just wondering if there's any corrections or additions to the minutes. I have one correction. I have one correction to the minutes, please. At the beginning, in terms of who is attending, my last name is spelled oddly. And during the, uh, inside the, the minutes, it's spelled correctly. So if you could just fix it in its first iteration. I also have a, I, I'm, yeah, so I'm not on it at all, but I was in attendance. So my name should probably be added to in attendance. And Mary, did, did you hear that? Did you hear that Kathy Petrobo needs to be added as in attendance because she was there? Oh, when you're ready. Can you all hear me? <laughs> you can? And Mary, you let us know when you're ready for us to move forward. Yeah. That's fine. It's fine. It's okay now. And Mary, should we continue? Okay, um, old business, uh, I think it's important for us to have for the minutes and just for the record that at the June 12th, 2021 special town meeting, um, the uh, bylaws that the planning board uh, initiated were passed. Those were solar formula, um, site plan review and um, And, oh, and, 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 and site formula based site plan review and right formula, formula, formula based. and then formula based business and um these the um was passed municipal frontage was not passed at the at the annual town at the annual town meeting correct um and we still do have pending for potentially a um town meeting in October, there is the issue of select board, select men going through uh, that terminology, going through our zoning bylaws. And then also there's a very small technical uh, correction to our floodplain review bylaws that were approved um, several town meetings ago. So thank you also to uh, people on the, in the community and certainly the planning board and many people behind the scenes who helped. Um, it was a, quite a yeoman's effort on many people's parts and we really, really appreciate it. That's what makes town government work is when people work and show up, right? <laughs> um, new business and as Tim Hilchey was suggesting, um, the first thing on our new business um, agenda is uh, to discuss our meeting format going forward. And maybe there won't be a whole lot of <laughs> discussion. Our options are hybrid, Zoom only, or in-person only. Um, can, can we um, you want to speak into that? Yeah. <laughs> so is an is it an option for us to um, have the board in person, but comments on th that form of hybrid so that we're here um, and the, if members of the public want to um, arrive via the Zoom meeting that, that they can do that. That's what I'm wondering. So hybrid being us being hybrid is complicated. We've just discovered that tonight pretty big time, but a hybrid meeting where the public is zooming in is that is that as complicated well i did see today um comment that 
we can decide to have just the boards board in attendance and does anyone else remember what was seen? Did anyone else see that? I mean, we were in, we used to be on TV and it's not that we had a thing, it was close enough, it came in. Oh, it was coming. <laughs> well, <laughs> right here and say, you're talking about my thing right now, I need to be here. But that that is kind of what would happen on Zoom if somebody was, this was their issue. I'm the neighbor of this person, I want to hear about it. Then can they zoom in as opposed to coming in person? Public comment. Like the board's here, but public comment comes in via Zoom. If cat, you're only um, recorded, you're not live, or are you live also? Because you I guys are live on Zoom, but it's not being broadcasted to channel 15 because there's some technical problems with that. Is that just today or are is that always? Uh, during the pandemic at some point before 2021 came about. There was a thunderstorm which caused a blackout or a brownout and it fried up some of the equipment. We're looking to get it fixed, come up with some solutions. And um, the computer that we were using to stream the meetings broke down. We are having a That's fine. Yeah. Employees Sounds like it's not going to work. Okay. okay. So our options appear to be to potentially have. Or what we're talking about right now is in person, oh, in person board and in person public if public chooses to come and otherwise not engage Zoom. Is that what you're suggesting? No, I'm saying no. engage the public on Zoom with, with the planning board, the board present. Person. That seemed to work with Tim. You could, you could, you could ask, you could address. So I'm saying that that seemed to work um, to have the public comment be via Zoom. They could also be present, but um, all planning board members would be physically present. That seemed to work. Mm. Would you? Yes, I feel that. And Mary is saying that she would rather have it be Zoom only. Yeah, in terms of accessibility, people with health issues, people with other issues, it just makes it so much more convenient, I think, for lots and lots of people. Were we having any of these technical difficulties via Zoom only? No. So couldn't we do what we're normally doing, but it's just not working tonight, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it worked fine for the select board meeting. Um, no, it actually didn't. Um, David was remote and was zooming in and there was a terrible echo and reverberation. Uh -huh. It's very okay. hard to understand anything he was saying. Okay. Uh, Jeff Upton in the public. Yes, just a, I, I'm just curious. I'm thinking back a little bit about why you do not want to have the public in an open meeting. Uh, no, that's not what's that's being said. That's not what we're saying at all. We're, we're talking about whether people are physically present. And the suggestion was, well, we all, we, well, by the governor's order, we have to do some combination. They could, but actually we have a planning board member who, who says that she would prefer to Zoom. She would prefer. I mean, I mean, I believe if we were having a public meeting, and certainly if people from the public showed up, we would allow public comment. Absolutely. Yeah, no question. Well, that's, that's, okay. So it's, again, it seems that our options are either Zoom only. Yeah. Comments coming through Zoom. No, I think no. it was. Do we all come through Zoom? Do we all come through Zoom? Do we all come in, or do we do this hybrid that's not working? 
that seems to be our choice is that we all come in or we all do Zoom. That's only the only two that actually work. That, you know, so right. I think your point is for some people coming in is just not possible. So Zoom is possible for everybody. It's probably the most inclusive yet. Not everybody, but anybody who's Well, that's true. If they don't right. have, yeah. But they could also phone in. So, and everyone has a telephone. I, so I, I think what I was saying wasn't so much that all the public comments are only coming on the Zoom. I'm just saying that if people really felt uncomfortable coming in, they could make comments. And I think that us staying here, it's easier for us to be presenting ourselves as a board and to be presenting our That's all I'm saying. Is that I think that I feel more inhibited by by Anne Mary or Kathy or Denise not being here, then to be honest. I mean, we've had plenty of meetings where it's just us. So it's not like, so that's what I'm, that's all I'm saying is that the public entering into the conversation through hybrid, I think it's important. I just think it's really hard. For also, too, if we make a decision now, uh, it doesn't mean that we can't reconsider in another month or two when. Uh, I know that the town is planning on getting some additional technology and but no one's trying to prevent anybody Absolutely. from taking part in any meeting part. Well, I just, I was I thinking don't... across the board, should we have consistency? You know, the select boards opened up town hall, people can come in. There's, uh, you know, uh, yeah. uh, time for public comment and that. Uh, oh. You know, the finance committee, same thing. Know, Understood. Understood. Right. If we're everybody doing the same thing, all the boards across, you know, it just make it easier for the public to understand and what's available and what's not. Available. And enter into it. That's right. right. So again, I guess um, I mean we have the option of hybrid in person or Zoom. And well, can so, we just try the hybrid one more time like <laughs> next month and see if we can make this work? Because I think that's the most popular for everybody. Well, I think that it's also a real need. I think that we're yeah. not out of the woods. I think that there is a Delta variant. I think that we do have very fragile people in our community. I think that we don't all have to, you know, shout about invisible disabilities or whatever people may have. But I think that engagement was certainly increased from what I saw as a planning board member um, on Zoom, I thought that there were more people in the book. We did not really. All right, well, then, I think the best thing to do in that case would be to make a hybrid work. Our next and meeting is idea. August 2nd. Um, <clears throat> our next uh, regularly scheduled planning meeting is August 2nd. So maybe if I could have a motion about uh, the format that we should use for the August 2nd 2021 meeting. I make a motion that we do a hybrid meeting. Second. Okay, so that's uh, Anne Mary has moved and Kathy has seconded um, that we have a hybrid meeting on Monday, August 2nd, and then to be determined after that. Is there any further discussion? Okay, um, so we'll have a, a roll call. Um, and Mary? Oh, oh no. no, it's the other, other it's remote. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Um, and, and Mary, yes, I, Den uh, Denise is en route, en route, en route. Okay, Rachel? Rachel and I. Kathy Petroba? Kathy Petroba, I. Kathy Sylvester? Kathy Sylvester, I. Andrea Liebson. Andrea Liebson, I. And Annalie Wolfko, I. So our meeting on, July, on August 2nd will be hybrid with the public certainly invited uh, to attend either by Zoom or by in person, whichever they choose. <clears throat> um, Uh, our next issue for new business is that um, Treehouse Brewing Company is planning on uh, coming to the planning board for phase two of their um, renovations and operations and will need to come forward with our site plan review. So um, the 
next available opportunity for that would be our August 2nd meeting, um, uh, which would give us two weeks for the, uh, for the postings. Um, then they'll bring, they'll send, we'll get, because the seed team have a lot to do with that in terms of. Yes, I imagine. I mean, in the previous site plan review, they gave us a lot of information. And I, um, I know they've started the process with town uh, people, but um, ha I haven't heard specifically what they'll be giving us, but I'm sure that with plenty of advance uh, notice, considering how much information was given at the last phase one for phase one. May I ask a question? Do we have a time um, uh, a timeline that we request information from? So they need to prevent provide it to us within a week of the meeting, within ten days of the meeting. At at this point, or from earlier in the year, we've mentioned that any any uh, materials that would come to us. Uh, would be um, by the uh, Thursday before our Monday meeting. Welcome, Denise. <laughs> so yes, Thursday before the Monday meeting, but um, we can ask if they can <laughs> Okay. Um, so uh, could I have a motion to Schedule the public hearing um, for Treehouse Brewing on. Yes, it's a public hearing for the beginning of the site plan review for phase two. Uh, couldn't we have a second? A second, second. And is there any discussion? All right. Um, well, uh, roll call. You know, I would little discussion. I think that they should come in early so that we can, if they do that presentation here, they should come in early so that we have massive clarity around how this is going to work. If they're going to make a presentation on the room. That who's coming in early? Three house. Or these people. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, us, right. but whoever, but so that we would ask them to come in early so that we were that's okay. Running by seven. Yeah, so that, that we're, 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 we're you know, test case, you know, we got it going on. We, so we have that's screen share enough. and everything else, that's, right. That's hard enough when we're doing it when it, in person, as Jeff pointed out, this PA system isn't great. The sound goes, it was made for school children <laughs> to have lunch in here, and the sound was supposed to go up there. And so. <laughs> hey, Rachel, could I just say something? Right. When, when everyone's talking, speak right into the mic, because from home you can't hear. Yes, it. and it, that's another thing about this room. So it's just the room is tough as well as Zoom. Yeah. So that's that's the thing. Um, but I would think that if Treehouse came and we would kind of worked it out so that it was really a good show. That's all. Because I think that there's no problems. Yeah. And it is, I note that we already have a six o'clock executive session before. Oh, well, that's so we can be someplace else and they can be out here. That's not us. Okay. That's right, though. I forgot about that. That's that same day. Right, all right. And, and that's just us. An executive session is not the advice Yes, I understand. All right, any more discussion about uh, the Treehouse public hearing on August 2nd at, 7 p at the 7 p.m. planning board meeting? Um, <clears throat> all right, we'll have a vote. And Mary? Denise? Aye. Rachel? Aye. <clears throat> Kathy Wotroba? Kathy Wotroba, aye. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, aye. Andrea Liebson. Andrea Liebson, aye. And Lee Wolfkohl, aye. So um, we will have the public hearing on August 2nd. <clears throat> um, and now, um, almost uh, two coinciding uh, conversations really in new business is, um, this is really a good working meeting of uh, uh, discussing planning board priorities for our coming fiscal year. I'm not anticipating that we will finalize those priorities this evening because the second piece of this conversation also is determining um, are there other newer, new and improved better ways to engage the community in both coming to our meetings as well as helping um, give ideas and opinions on what 
our priorities should be for the coming year. Pardon me? There's our reporter person right there. There's and our I reporter person. That's part of it. So That's, I love the coverage. Well, I that. that I think, yes, yeah, start. Let's um, maybe start that part of the conversation is for um, engagement. I mean, uh, it's, it's wonderful when we can have articles, um, otherwise postings cost money, but depending on potentially what we want to do, I suppose. I see in, I see in the pandemic that the reporter has given more attention. They've got that second page. They're really working the local news, what's happening in Buckland, what's happening. And I'd love a little more proactive from the reporter. I think that they, I'm gonna push that a little bit because to, to, so that the public is thinking about those things, not just reporting on what it was, but what's coming up. So potentially maybe that would mean talking with, uh, say, Chris Larrabee, who has Deerfield um, um, on ways of having that be occur. Okay. Um, one thing that can help with some public engagement also is, uh, I, I do recall, and I'm sure Rachel and, and Mary and probably even Denise recall in the past, uh, on the agenda, there would usually be um, at the end of the agenda an opportunity for public comment. And somehow that has dropped off our routine agendas, but um, that seems like that could be an opportunity to include back on again. So, okay, agenda. Um, I sent to the planning board today uh, <laughs> a rather dense um, several paragraphs from the Attorney General's Office on open mm -hmm. meeting law talking about or, or addressing the question of um, social media and reaching out to social media. And as I said, it was fairly dense and I'm interested in what uh, the planning board members have to say from their interpretation. Um, certainly my takeaways from that were that we can certainly post on social media sites, um, both announcements of meetings and also request information from the public. But, <laughs> and, and I can just, <laughs> subject to interpretation, right. Um, there, there ha we have to have very, very careful avoidance of the appearance of either giving an opinion or appearing to deliberate, especially if um, there is a quorum or there are other, other um, planning board members on the social media sites. And in general, that's to be assumed, <laughs> I um, would imagine. Not necessarily. Some mm -hmm. of us eschew social media. <laughs> exactly. Right. And, and so, so and they're not there, and that means you're, you're automatically cut off. And I think that that's the conversation with the trade too. And again, I would think that the town, the town has a website, you can go to it, that's a kind of form of social media, as it were. Um, and I, I worry using social media to, as a vehicle for just one board, especially, like we want it across the board, at all the kind of equal. Like, this is the, you could have a, like the Greenfield, the Deerfield Police has a, a Facebook account. So does anybody, you know, where, what, what usually comes through that? What kind of information? So, you know, it's more celebratory. It's not that it's so informational. If the Deerfield Police just counted on that for their information, that would be problematic. Right. I mean, I think in my mind, there are two things. We want information only, like tonight's the meeting. Please come. Right. <laughs> and then, hmm. You know, we're going to be discussing at this next meeting our proposed zoning bylaws on da da da. Please let us know. You know, what are your ideas? And is that something? I mean, I'll have to admit, hey, I've never gone to this the Deerfield website I, for I would, comments. I would strongly oppose that. <laughs> I, you know, I think it's a great idea when you know to to put on Deerfield now or onto Facebook that there's a meeting and we encourage participation. But I think it's a big mistake to open up any discussion because I I am mm. on social media, and it's not pretty. And the moment you post it, 
you're opening it's not good. Social, you're opening yeah. it to commentary. You are, well, yeah. in fact, and yeah. people feel represented because they posted on there who may or may not come to the meeting and who may or may not have seen that conversation but feel like they've been heard right. when it hasn't been officially heard by us. And I wouldn't want anyone to feel like they would be represented when we haven't heard. Yeah, and too many things misconstrued. Exactly. I, I agree. Yeah, I, yeah. I think for just you know stating that there's a meeting, I think that's great, but I would not encourage any kind of yeah. discourse. Mm -hmm. So can uh, I really, yeah. can I ask? We were, we're talking about. Wait, 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 wait! I want to hear, but even stating a meeting, you still have comments. Like if you, no, if you post on Instagram, we have a meeting. You still have comments underneath, you have likes and whatever. I mean, that's that's what it invites. It's not. So I was going to ask, um, does the recorder still have a calendars page, you know, so that we could yeah. list things that would be a very public forum and we would be able to say, here's a meeting, here are the things to be discussed. I don't know if they do. It seemed to me do you know if that's they don't have cost money. No. That's, that's again, that's online only, isn't it? No, no it's also? Yeah. Okay. I, I feel like posting that there is a meeting on the Deerfield Now page or whatever, it may get comment, but as long as we don't comment back, I find that page very helpful to bring attention to, to things going on in town that I might not otherwise know. So I feel like it does have some use to well, just post it at, there's a meeting tonight, we're gonna to discuss accessory housing or whatever it is. Well, I feel like those sites are super helpful in that they do that, but I think that's different than us posting that. You know what I mean? I think that Trevor and Raina and um, some other people who run other Deerfield sites take it on and they do that. And I think that's a great service and I'm really grateful that they do that. But I think that if we were posting it, it would be a different Thing. And of course, anybody can post whatever they want and everybody can comment on it, but I think that we need to stay out. I don't understand the difference between if we were posting that there's a meeting tonight at 7 p.m. versus if uh, Trevor is posting that. Because, well, in my mind, I don't, I'm sure there are others. The issue that concerns me is that if I were to post on Deerfield now, I'm not on Deerfield, if I were to post on Deerfield now, there's a meeting tonight. Someone who may or, someone who can make the meeting may make a comment that they think that I, as a planning board member, will take into consideration at that meeting, but I may not have checked my Facebook. I may not have, you know what I mean? I, yeah. you know, I don't want to be held responsible for all the comments that are then on that page and See that. for representing them. You know, not that I don't want to represent people, but I feel like this is the this is how we do it, that we do it here in town. Yeah. In, you know, our meetings. What if there was a disclaimer for informational purposes only? I still think that whoever runs those pages should do it. I, I still, I still wouldn't personally do it. I feel like that's, you know, I won't be at the meeting, but couldn't we just, could we just, Kathy? Yes. Could we just post the town of Deerfield link on the Deerfield now, or post our own planning board? agenda on Deerfield now so people can look at it we're not we're just posting that there is a meeting we're not commenting or we're, we're just saying this is what will be available on this date and it's what's already on the Deerfield Massachusetts page so okay Kathy, lead them there Kathy so what you're saying is then just planning board meeting night 7 p.m check out the Deerfield website link and link we're going to link it back to the town of Deerfield page, which is kind of where we want people to go anyway. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I mean, it's an option. That's all I'm saying. I, I totally agree with this conversation because it's a slippery slope. It can, it's, you know, it, in doing something that you think is going to be beneficial and in, informative and help people, you know, there, there could be another side to that where there's an unintended consequence or outcome that you're not predicting because that's not your motivation in putting something on Deerfield now, but something as a, as a link that brings them back to our town of Deerfield page, which has a plethora of information that they could draw off of that might eliminate that personal um, position that 
could be interpreted from something that's posted on Deerfield now by a planning board member. And who would do that? Anybody that well, wanted to. I mean, I've been doing it as a chair. I've been posting, but I've also been saying uh, one or two agenda items, which can be omitted. I mean, I think, again, the, the goal of this discussion is trying to get more public engagement. So that, I mean, I, I fully believe in representational government and that we are all here representing the people of Deerfield, not what I particularly think should happen to the zoning bylaws. Um, so, you know, there are incremental ways we can move forward. Can I with make that. a suggestion? I think this is an interesting conversation, but I would like to I would like to table this conversation for now and think about it a little bit more because it is 20 minutes past eight and we have just started. Yes, I mean essentially, and I mean we might circle back to yep. this. Yeah, because as I was saying, even um, in terms of the priorities, which we'll be discussing next, I'm not necessarily expecting that um, our priorities for the coming fiscal year, we will make a decision on um, tonight because in fact, it would also be really nice to know what the community wants. I do think that we should have um, a town meeting, town meeting signs made up that we can put in people's lawns a Saturday or you know, the week before town meeting so people know that it's that week. I do think that we should have both Saturday or vote Wednesday signs, a package of each that we can put in, um, put on municipal volunteers' lawns. Particularly the special town meeting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That way people are reminded and we can engage participation because there are people who um, are engaged through the computer and then there are people who are engaged through, you know, in real life, what they see in town. Um, we all have a lot of, a lot going on. So all of those visual reminders, it's science. The more you see it, the more likely we were. Um, so I feel like if we're talking about the fiscal future, I feel like that's a few hundred dollars that would be well spent. And can I make a suggestion, not just in South Deerfield because people live to, to live in the outskirts. So I think it's great when things are posted here. I don't necessarily see it all the time. Right, but wherever yeah. we have yeah, volunteers definitely. to put, you know, signs that remind people to come engage. Okay, so um, it sounds as if the, um, the general gist was, if there is going to be any, if, <laughs> big if, any social media posts that they would be done with great care and we will discuss that later in the meantime to sort of check out what is possible with the town with the town website with um the recorder notebook um and people's ruminations uh between now and our next meeting okay good thank you good um, so our priorities, I sent to you a um, very unprioritized list um, that of, of suggestions that have been made to me in the last six months. Um, uh, and I don't, yeah, if, if you have them in front of you, I mean, certainly um, one of the questions was circling back to the accessory bylaws um, that we began. Um, second one, which I actually feel quite responsible for, and I think the um, board would probably agree, is that we did say that we would um, come back to um, address small scale solar. And that's most likely um, a reasonable uh, goal that we could have for what will probably be a town meeting, a special town meeting in, in October. Um, signage has been mentioned off and on um, by a number of people as something that our sign bylaws are uh, quite a bit in need of revisions. Um, the issue of quote up zoning the town center, as I understand that, that would be to um, promote more development um, higher density mixed use development in the town center. Um, that was presented as a um, possibility 
that would be seen as a good initiative for the planning board um, to be seen, you know, that we are in fact promoting um, economic development, not putting our, our hands up all the time. Um, and certainly as we look at other towns around us that have town centers with more than a 35 foot um, cap that occurs in other towns. Um, mixed use development bylaws uh, for, again, for walkable commercial and housing uses on a single site. Um, the green infrastructure policy, um, this was a policy that I know our select board was really quite um, proud about when they passed it. Um, but as we've mentioned previously, if we don't have the bylaws and the regulations to uh, back up these policies, it doesn't, um, they're just <laughs> nice policies. Um, certainly the, um, uh, well, mentioned there. Um, Short-term rentals, Andrea and I did um, attend a really interesting and thought-provoking FERCOG webinar on basically, you know, Airbnb short-term rentals, tax revenue that could be yeah, a rental tax revenue that can come to the town, but also liabilities that the town might have uh, by having unregulated short-term rentals. I could see how that could actually be a stepping stone in relation to the accessory apartment bylaws and the registry. Um, subdivision regulations, that's been um, mentioned in a number of areas. And it was interesting for me to look at our subdivision regulations, which are in fact in our handy dandy book here, um, that subdivision regulations are um, changed and approved by a vote of the planning board, not, not at town meeting. To me, that almost feels like more of a, <laughs> more of a responsibility, a burden. Yeah. Um, we have someone who came and spoke to that when we were talking about the um, accessory well, there was a person, there was a, someone who came before us and really needed a bylaw talking about, um, uh, sorry, what was the last Subdivision? Yeah, and multi-family development. So I know that there's a need for that because someone came before us and asked for that. So maybe we can consider that that's actually been you know, well right. Um, one thing that was, it's not on the list, but that was mentioned to me today um, was um, <laughs> total review of our zoning bylaws, um, which could be quite a substantial <laughs> challenge. <laughs> Um, the Deerfield Master Plan. I mean, we have referred to it in a number of at a number of times. Um, a master plan usually should be a long-term plan, although this long-term plan is approximately 21 years old. Yeah, 11 years old. <laughs> really? You think it's 2010? Yeah, yeah, it was 2010. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. Uh, ish, coolish. Okay. <laughs> the housing production plan from 2014. The processes, I think, are something that could potentially be more um, <laughs> connected to uh, town staff. Um, not that they need anything more to do, but um, our fee schedule, our application materials, especially now that we have a new site plan review bylaw. Um, you know, being able to give our applicants very clear guidelines as to how they go about applying for special permits and for site plan review. Um, we certainly have, I think, made a good dent with the orientation and ongoing education. One of the things that I'm aware of, um, FERCOG, as you know, Andrew and I that attended some meetings, I know um, some of you have also, um, FERCOG really has a wealth of um, assistance that they can offer us, but I don't think that uh, most of us really know a lot about what that is. So potentially they could just come as a guest. And they actually have, uh, and I know I've kicked off with that menu, a menu that goes over six months, all the different places that you can go with different, you know, uh, you know, uh, does you know, creating, like, and actually add them to um, the, 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 the
their website is extensive too. They're right. So mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and certainly seems like something for us to right. tap into more. Um, <laughs> we're working on how to develop stronger mechanisms for communications to and from residents. And also, um, as we noticed, uh, when Denise and everyone was putting together the, not everyone, but hard work going into the handbook that we have a, we do have one document that says uh, responsibilities and duties of planning board members and it's from 2011 <laughs> and just gazing it um, and Annalie that was that was actually formulated by the planning board so I don't yeah. think there's yeah so I mean we can we yeah, can take we can work on that right so um if we want to have some conversation about those can I add an additional mm -hmm. one absolutely um I'd like to add an additional one I um I'm curious about the um, properties that the town owns or is supposed to manage. And I'm wondering if we could have more information about those, perhaps a tour. For example, the senior center, it's my understanding we, that if we, anyone can go in, they can only go in on one floor. I think it would be very helpful for us to know what's going on in that building in general. And then other buildings or properties that the town owns and i'm saying that as a new member of the of the planning board but perhaps older members would also like to see that or at least to see uh what condition things are in at this point mm -hmm. um yes i've um put a request about that into lily dwight and um she's talking with the town common beautification yes Well, those of us who are who are new to the planning board, you know, it would be nice to have an up, uh, maybe an updated um, meeting about that. Or yeah, hey, Annalie, I'm sorry, Jeff has his hand up. Jeff, thank you. Yes, uh, on your town website. If you go on there, there's uh, with the building assessment committee and the town did, and it gives a fairly detailed description of the condition of your buildings, of your town buildings, and that would be helpful. That would be a starting point. And uh, I know Julie had talked, I think she's the chair mm -hmm. of that committee, mm -hmm. and you know maybe maybe a meeting for additional information. Great, thank you. Uh, also, the select board, they're looking at that too. So, Agreed. once again, maybe a little coordination that might help the planning board. And Jeff, I think the last select board meeting, I think someone, there was a list of how many properties the town actually owns, and I was surprised at how many. Mm -hmm. Right, that oh, was, exactly. that was uh, your senior housing committee. Right. And they pointed out how many properties. Uh, obviously, some of that is available and could work uh, for different situations for the town. Mm -hmm. Some of it is kind of like landlocked, so right. it's tough to really do much with it. But it's there, and you know there might mm -hmm. be some wheeling and dealings and trade off mm -hmm. or whatever. Well, right. And it would just be nice to know where those are. Right. So, hmm. um, um, just something to consider. Uh, potentially, if we could have um, some discussion, if need be, or um, agreement on moving forward with updating or finalizing our solar bylaws, is that something that everyone feels? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. So high priority. Uh, that, I think that was when we engaged Chris for this. Let's just get down to focus on that one thing. We mm -hmm. walked through with him. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. there's that a good task. Right. Um, so, uh, otherwise, what? <laughs> well, I was just going to say. So, I mean, this is this is a big laundry list, and I'm thinking, mm -hmm. you know, I always like to look at things and prioritize. So, you know, may, we may not be able to prioritize that prioritize that tonight. But when I was looking at the master plan, which is pretty extensive and somewhat outdated, 
you know, I looked to see how many people were involved and there was maybe, I can't remember how many, maybe five different committees involved. So I think if we were able to break it down into various committees and to take a look and to start updating that. But then again, my question is, how have we utilized that? The master plan and what, what is the value? I mean, I understand, I think I had a short conversation with Carolyn about that. I'd, I'd like to ask her again, but there was a specific reason why that was done. And I don't know if you remember that, Rachel. No. If anybody well, does. My understanding also is that master plans in general, um, that that one costs about 80K. Yeah. And <laughs> I, I don't think that we need to enlist other people to, I think we need to, you know, maybe take a look, break it down to see exactly, you know, what the different components are. And then to really understand what the value of updating that is, mm -hmm. you know, cause I mean, you know, I've done business planning for 20 years and it's like writing a business plan. That's great, but you don't just put it on the shelf. It's gotta be something mm -hmm. that's actually, you know, a usable document. Well, you don't just make one that aspirational so much though, that you, you have exactly really right. any intention yeah. of although again the flip side of excuse me the the flip side of having um one with a lot of community engagement is in fact there's a lot of community engagement and we have a chance then to see right so what so maybe want. a good idea is for if, if we're considering that each of us to actually take a look at least take a look at the, you know the various parts of the plan yeah. to see what they have and i know there's just one copy town hall Oh, so if, well, we have a uh, an electronic yeah, copy, not, but yeah, it's that's, that's I mean it's huge for it yeah. sending it yeah. to people. There's the executive summary also, which is yeah. 25 pages, which is <laughs> huge enough. Right. <laughs> Maybe so that's that's something to consider if that's something we want to dive into. I think I'd like to have a, a, another conversation with Carolyn to see actually where that went. Exactly. Planning points or action points, you know. Right. Did it stir anybody to take action? That was the thing. The housing production, I was part of that. The housing production, that's why I'm saying That's why the accessory apartments was part of it because when you talk about affordable housing, that you're, yeah. you're, you're making a, an assumption, it's like affordable. It's, Instead of like senior housing, affordable housing, these are all like these are all different things. Section eight housing, that's very different. Right. Right? So well, I was reading the master plan that led me to this question right. of what is yeah. And and one of the things that we discovered in, in 2014 was that um, there's not a lot of housing that is affordable for people to live here. Right. But that's different than affordable housing yeah, which sure. comes to mind. So yeah. what it was it discovered like a teacher and somebody who just joined the police force. They wouldn't be able to live in their place. So you had that moment where you're like, cool, that's a bummer. So that was that was part of the discussion in the supposition concept of, you know, like are there is there room in this town for housing that is not, you know, right. to go to five minutes was not meant to be affordable. Right. It wasn't affordable senior housing, it was right. for senior housing. The idea was that if a developer we're gonna add a lot of traffic to that place. Well it is it's our Condos and you know uh, multifamily housing is that the way to introduce housing that people can afford? You know, is it, is it accessory? Accessory. Well, yeah. accessory apartments. Was <laughs> first, that was just one. That's low line. Right. Right. No, 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 no. right. But I'm saying, like, is there there's a mosaic? Something. Yes, there's a mosaic available, and that's the idea. Right. I mean, and I think some of it was this is maybe part of the reason too. Uh, we're pushing for because in fact there is affordable housing that is in our town that's not on the book right and you kind of want that people see that that's there yeah so that you say no actually we do have yeah. more housing that's affordable than people see because it's actually not on the books right but then we're gonna you know we push it underground uh, so i just think that that's part of the clarity of that that my push there on accessory apartments is necessarily to make a whole lot more more to, to understand that we do have some and that there may be more mm -hmm. available. I mean, the other thing about accessible uh, apartments is it allows for people to stay in their homes if they have that extra income. Mm -hmm. And so that's another little side piece. But mm -hmm. anyway, I I, uh, I think that to to it that was part of the production plan, but another part of the production plan was to look at the yeah. multi-family dwellings and where they would be best to you know where, where would they serve the best service. 
Yeah, I mean, um, I can see the Pandora's box with this. We've already <laughs> made a, a, a start and got some good feedback on accessory apartment bylaws. Um, is, that, is that yet again a place to, um, to go back and begin recognizing that there still is the question of condos and uh, short-term rentals and the registry and affordable housing um, that those are branches of that tree and we're just dealing with one branch that we've already got a good start on or what are people's I, I feel like they're all branches of the same tree I feel like you know one of the things that I took away from a for frog training is you know as a planning board what we want our town to look like is that keeping the village part of the villaging and keeping the open spaces open um, is that uh, sort of allowing, you know, sort of this laissez faire, people put up what they want, where they want, you know, how, how susceptible are we to outside developers, um, you know, depending on our, how much uh, affordable or housing people can afford, we have available, and how do people, like, I think that there are people who don't want to put their um, apartments they don't want them to, um, uh, they're afraid that they're somehow going to be penalized through taxation or some other way if they sort of make known that they have an accessory apartment or they have an apartment at all. Yeah, exactly. So like, let's make it legal. Like, let's give them a way that we can put these apartments on the books as affordable housing or housing unit board um, and allow them to sort of understand that they're not breaking the rule anymore there are no rules against what they're doing. And in fact, that's a way that we want to promote people making, having their own teeny weeny businesses mm -hmm. in their homes. Mm -hmm. you know? um, Furcog gave um, a uh, cha <laughs> challenging, but clearly well-informed webinar about this. I wonder if we could have Furcog either come to talk with us or one or two of us could talk with some of the people at FERCOG to see how they might suggest all of these ways of going about it. I think it would be habitless first that they come and talk at a meeting so that it, it's, shared, it's shared with um, the public. Because yeah. 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 I think that makes sense to hear all of them. It, 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 it's a, you know, it's, it's a really good You can see it from one angle and then another angle and to be able to think about it from your point of view. And it's too easy to assign intentionality. You know what I mean? Right. Well, I think that's that's worthy. That would be that would be a, a good I think so because it's clearly yeah. um, quite challenging. Um and then we could put it in the notebook in the brief recorder. If the problem is coming, we don't have a Ah, right. Come and listen. Um, all right, I like that. Um, the, and that ties in with subdivision regulations, the House of Production Plan, all of that, our accessory apartments, all of that, and how we might go next with that. That's nice. Um, the Black Board's Green Infrastructure Policy, um, the Planning Board has, um, some assigned spots on it, and that's part of it being the subdivision regulations for green streets. Um, again, revising subdivision regulations to reduce curbing and promote stormwater recharge on site in bioswales, promote solar friendly layouts. Um, so, uh, you know, other than Frickhog coming to talk with us also about the whole general piece, it, would that be something that we should tie into the, that Frickhog discussion and see how it happens later? I mean, let's keep that in mind because um, that is part of what my understanding is, is that, you know, through the select board and the town, town people that, that, that these green infrastructure policies are policy is something that we want. All right. It's quarter of nine now. Maybe this is a good 
place to stop with this, but in the meantime, um, if, oh, public comment, um, Alex. Are you taking public comment? Sure, um, sure. Could you, um, Speak to the town properties. How do you mean? Probably. Oh, yeah. oh, right. I'm on it too. Right, 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 right. Oh, she's is she still raising her hand? I don't see Lily there. No. Yes, her hand is. Oh, there she is, Lily. Hi. Mm -hmm. Hi, Lily. Thank you. Unmute. Unmute. Okay, I mean, I I was raising my hand because I could address some of the questions that came up on the the town properties, but I um, but you guys have moved on, so I I just but I will point out that this is the challenge of the hybrid that um, I was actually able to answer the questions, but instead the person who was in the room. Um, you know, spoke about it, and uh, so, so in other words, you didn't get it from the horse's mouth, but you got it from the guy who was at the meeting, but still, that was my point is just that with these hybrid meetings, um, I think that it should be added that there someone is really managing uh, those of us who join remotely. Thank you. Yeah, we didn't see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So if somebody on the board were running this, whether or not we would be able to hear it, then maybe that's a part of the solution. All right. Oh, Jeff. Oh, Jeff. Oh, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff Upton, resident, sit on a couple of committees and that. And I just want to clear the air with the planning board uh, to make sure that there's no misunderstanding here. Back when we had the select board meeting uh, the 22nd, I made some comments at the beginning of that uh, meeting. And I discussed several things as far as, and very complimentary, uh, as far as committees and people serving on them. I made some comments about uh, a quick call for a vote at the annual town meeting, and I will stand by those comments. Um, during that time that I spoke, I never mentioned an individual, and I never mentioned a committee. And one member of the planning board uh, decided to take me to task as far as Maybe a misunderstanding, but accusing me of attacking the, or excuse me, accuse me of taking pot shots at the planning board and blaming the planning board for engineering the quick thought. Once again, please review the video. I never said anything about the planning board or any other board. I never said anything about any individual. Those comments, and I said, once again, I'll stand by those comments, were directed for two people that were sitting in this room that night. I would never criticize a board with work that they do. And I just wanted to make that clear to make sure that people understood that. And I'm taking the high road on this because I think it's appropriate. And I think as far as a person in this community, and as far as a board member on other boards, the idea is to work together as far as committees and try to do what's best for your field. So I just want to make that clear. Uh, the intention was not anything to do with the planning board. And as I said, please, if you have any doubts, 
please go back and review that video because that was not the intent. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I you. appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And I'd be willing to discuss it privately too. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Jim. Um, other business not reasonably anticipated, uh, just an FYI to the planning board. Um, at our last meeting, we did vote for the continuation of the Lascotti public hearings on October 4th, contingent upon um, their appearing before the Conservation Commission. Um, we're now awaiting, or I'm awaiting cons confirmation from town council that um, Lascotti acknowledges that they have received this notice of continuation. And do you know if they have a scheduled meeting with the council? Don't know anything at all. So waiting to hear from town council on that one. Um, uh, secondly, one of the other things that I discovered when I was reading our proposed solar bylaws and looking at the old ones is that in fact, every year at uh, the beginning of the calendar year, there's supposed to be a, an annual report sent to many boards, select board, planning board, fire chief, building commissioner um, on the status of the solar installation in regards to their um, maintenance plan. And that hasn't been received and certainly it's not. To, to the building, it doesn't, go, it doesn't come to us though. Well, no, it goes, it's supposed to, the way that our bylaws yeah. state, states, it should go to select board, planning board, fire chief, emergency management director, building commissioner, board of health and conservation commission. So one report. That, right? One report that goes to everyone. So I've asked uh, Bob Walden and um, Casey to um, follow up on that and like to make sure that we get that <laughs> down yeah. here that we're looking for it. Um, oh, and the other, and another thing with um, our reorg last week, one of the, uh, we had a, a, a slight omission um, that planning, uh, with our planning board reorganization, um, FERCOG does have a Franklin Regional County Planning Board uh, representative. representative, which has been me. I'm certainly, um, it's, it's, they've had really good information. Um, I wouldn't, I, I'm fine continuing, but I also really would like to open it up if there needs to be an alternate, if I can't come to the meetings or a, a co-representative, I think they're really a good, a good group. So if anyone would like to it's come Thursday, forward. Right? Well, it's, uh, their actual meetings are every two months. Yeah. Um, I, I, was, I stopped receiving emails, but I thought I was, Still. I took over for you. Okay. <laughs> I would be interested. I think their stuff is yeah. really fascinating. So if you're okay. Interested. So unless unless somebody else wants to have a turn, because it really is pretty information good. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Not yet. <laughs> okay. Maybe All right. Time. We can uh, we can buddy it up and then. Um, I did not receive any mail today. Um, is, it, uh, is there any other business reasonably anticipated or not reasonably anticipated 40 hours in, in advance? No. Um, so our next meetings um, we are having, and there was a little bit of um, rescheduling connected to this, and there has been a little bit of confusion, but on Friday, July 23rd at 10 o'clock here in person, our um, training session. And um, I think, Denise, um, maybe you'll be working some with <laughs> Denise's, huh? <laughs> I mean, we need to sort of figure out what exactly our agenda oh, yeah, is going to be yeah, for that. Yeah, I'll, I'll so work, if you I'll have any specific, yeah, if you Jennifer have any specific yeah. um, questions or um, requests, uh, if you could forward well, them to Well, just Denise. now, I think it would yeah. be good for everyone to become familiar with the, is in the book. <laughs> with yeah, the gigantic right. book if you haven't at least look at all the different sections and then you know we'll go through I mean you know when I spoke with when I spoke sorry when I spoke with Jennifer about that you know, she said obviously you don't have to read every single thing you just have to know where to find information and I think some of it would be good to read through so just become familiar with that and then we'll go through that you can update them now because there's change well, yes, and what, what will happen is when we do have updates, um, any changes to zoning bylaws, anything, 
what we'll do is we'll add the new and just cross out the old. So it's not, so mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So we'll we'll discuss that. Yeah. We should figure out what we do about Zoom. Zoom spaces. We should figure out how to do that. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay. That would be before our next meeting. Right. Um, and so our next meet. Right, our August yes. meeting, August 2nd at 6 p.m. executive session, and at 7 p.m. a, um, apparently a hybrid meeting <laughs> um, at 7 p.m. with um, certainly one of the things being at the public hearing for Treehouse. Mm -hmm. And then Monday, September 13th, we won't have it at the first Monday of, um, September because of Labor Day, but so it would be Monday, September 13th at 7 p.m. Andrea, did you have? I just questions? wanted to say that um, on August 2nd, I would definitely need to Zoom because I won't be in town. I'm sorry? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yes, yes. Yeah, I won't be here for the executive session. All right, so. Um, if there's nothing else, we have a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Oh, shoot. I second it. <laughs> <laughs> Discussion. <laughs> All those in favor. Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. Thank you, everybody, for your patience and, and to the community. Aye. Thank you very much.